Hello, everyone, and welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis, which is brought to you by Law Seco. We hope you're all doing great, and you're going to listen to this newspaper analysis with great enthusiasm. So today we have a very interesting editorial that we have picked from the Hindu newspaper. The title of this editorial is Ending AFSPA. AFSPA here is the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. So we will learn as to what is it, where is it functional, and why are we thinking to end this as a policy, as a kind of rule. Secondly, we'll be talking about the news update, wherein we'll be discussing about the important awards, appointments, important small crisp news points that are specifically important for our prelims exam. And thirdly, we'll be covering up the legal news in which we'll be covering the most important and latest case laws of the day. So let's start a discussion with the only article for the day that we have is ending AFSPA. So let us first understand as to what basically is the AFSPA. AFSPA here stands for the Armed Forces Special Power Act, and it was brought in the year 1958. So as the name itself is signifying that this is a particular act that intakes or that brings or that gives extra or special powers to the armed forces of the country. So the Armed Forces Special Power Act 1958 has long been a bone of contention for the impunity that it provides to the armed forces. So basically what happens is that these special powers that are provided to the armed forces in some special areas, of course, we will learn as to which are these special areas of the country. So due to these special powers that are provided to the armed forces, they are quite immune to great amount of accountability and answerability, which in the recent times has been seen that has been significantly and critically, in a way, distorted and misused by the armed forces. Recently, if you were following the news, you must have heard that there was great turmoil against the AFSPA in the state of Nagaland. So what happened basically was that there were some people who were confused by the army men to be some kind of militants, and thus they were attacked. Now, in this entire combat, 14 civilians, 14 innocent civilians, basically, they were killed by the armed forces. When this rage happened, so the people of Nagaland came down onto the streets and they started protesting against the AFSPA. Now here this article also said that while the insurgencies in the northeast regions had been a strong contention, basically a strong reason for keeping the AFSPA in force, the future boards or brings well since the Prime Minister of India has now signaled to the end of the reign of AFSPA. As we know that a coin has both the sides, positive and the negative. Similarly for AFSPA as well, though it has been very, very critical in bringing down, or in a way we can say at least, holding the insurgencies that are very frequent in the northeastern regions. But at the same time, we also say that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Perhaps in some of the recent cases, it has been seen that this special power that is being enjoyed by the armed forces given under the AFSPA Act has instead of being utilized as a special agency, is rather being misused by the armed forces. Now, it is also said that while it is being argued that the work on repealing the AFSPA, that is bringing down or just completely taking it away from these regions, is a political stunt to show the good work that has been done under this regime in the Northeast, the repeal itself brings a sense of relief to the citizens of the states. Here, two things need to be considered. That firstly, the treatment, basically, which we were giving in the name of AFSPA is not more, is no more needed because the very problem has been solved. By this, we should mean that the insurgencies that were actually being tackled by AFSPA or the purpose for which was, you know, the insurgencies, they are not more, they are not happening anymore and thus we do not need AFSPA. Do you think that is the case? Well, here, I, you know, as general citizens of India, definitely that could not really be the case. But this would definitely signal this out in such a way that here, in this particular region, the insurgencies have come down, and so AFSPA is no more needed, and we would be repealing the same. Here, we can understand this with, with a very simple but a global example. When Donald Trump was fighting for the elections and he was contesting the elections, so in his election manifesto, one of the biggest things that made him uh, win the elections was his promise that he would bring back the American forces from the land of Afghanistan and they, were, they would be no more deployed, deployed on the land of Afghanistan. Though ultimately he won on this promise, but he could not really retract the forces, American forces back from Afghanistan. But again, the same manifesto was used by Biden as well, and he also won the elections. And somehow, no matter what, he was successful in bringing back the American forces from the land of Afghanistan. Now, do you think that there, the problem of terrorism and the problem that were uh, existing in uh, Afghanistan, did they really had just went? Did they, did they really go away? 
definitely that was not the case but there was a promise and there was some political promise and that was kept by the president and of course you now now know that what is the situation what is the turmoil currently going on in afghanistan so we are really afraid that something like this might also be the fate of the various northeastern states if at all afspa is just pulled in the name of a political question and the real scenario is not being tackled here i would also like to discuss with you guys that just few days before when we were talking about the legitimacy or the proper functioning of afspa in the northeastern regions it was pointed out in various newspaper articles that afspa has not really been able to function well as the insurgencies have not been able to be brought down in significant numbers now definitely this is nothing to be given a support for continuing with afspa but definitely it points out that the insurgencies still do prevail and that is why we need to have if not afspa but something else in its replacement so significant removal of the disturbed areas has further emboldened the mass as 23 districts were totally removed from afspa area and one district was partially removed in the state of assam and seven districts were free from afspa in nagaland leaving behind 13 districts also it was revoked completely in from, in, from tripura in 2015 and even from meghalaya in 2018 and the decrease in the disturbed areas is due to reduction in the insurgent tendencies improved security and the development please note this is the contention what the government has given the real numbers might really be way too different from this scenario Now the government, while repealing, should also focus on procuring justice for the excesses that happened during the regime of Afspa. And Mon District massacre is still fresh in the minds of the nation. And definitely, such incidences should not be repeated at the hands of the Indian Army that actually enjoys such prestigious image in the minds of the nation. With this, let's see what do we have for news updates today. Firstly, Nand Mulchandani has been named as the CIA's first ever CTO. So, Indian American Nand Mulchandani, will, uh, who completed his schooling in Delhi, has been named the first ever Chief Technology Officer of the Central Intelligence Agency. Please note that Central Intelligence Agency is almost similar like the Central Bureau of Investigation or the NIA, the National Investigation Agency that we have in India, and the CIA works in US. Mulchandani has over 25 years of experience working in the Silicon Valley. Secondly, India won silver in youth beach handball. So India won the silver medal at the youth girls Asian beach hand, uh, handball championship in Bangkok. The Finnish also earned them a spot in the world youth beach handball championship. Thirdly, Judicial Infrastructure Development Authority to be formed at the state level. So as it was proposed by the 48th Chief Justice of India, Justice N. V. Ramana. So also the Law Minister Kiran Rijiju has informed the Judicial Infrastructure Development Authority will be formed at state level to strengthen the judicial infrastructure of the country. The resolution including this was passed during the joint conference of Chief Ministers of the states and Chief Justices of the High Courts in Delhi. Fourthly. Vinay Mohan Quatra takes charge as new foreign secretary. So Vinay Mohan Quatra, a career diplomat, was appointed as the new foreign secretary on 4th April 2022. He takes charge of the department on 1st May 2022. That has already been done now. So Mr. Quatra succeeded Harshvardhan Shringla, who retired from service on Saturday. Let's see what do we have for our legal news today. Madras High Court declared that mother's na mother nature is a living being having all rights. duties and liabilities of a living person so the madras high court invoked the parents patriae jurisdiction and held that mother nature was a living being who had a legal entity a legal person or, or, or artificial and moral person with her own characteristic rights duties and liabilities the bench also held that the nature shall have its fundamental rights as promised by the indian constitution making the government liable for the protection of nature in all possible ways but definitely we can say this is actually a very progressive step in the right direction this was held in the case of a peria karupan versus the principal secretary to government and another so this was all for the day if you like the session do give it a thumbs up also you may subscribe to our channel for such more updates thank you so much everyone